Hi, I'm Edgar, and this is Zona, The Secrets of Chernobyl, and today I'll be playing as and painting the model of the Hunter. He has a decent stat line with three awareness, which I think is the most used stat, a poor smarts, but that's used a lot less. He also gets a bonus for fighting mutants if you pass the awareness test when encountering it. There's a quick step in the setup of the game that is also quite amusing, as the hunter, clearly a character who wants to be, you know, hunting mutants, his starting encounters are one mutant and one anomaly. But when playing a single player version of the Zona game, you randomly choose one other character and use their starting encounters as well. I picked the Merc who places two more mutants, so I'm going to have a field day. Speaking of fields, I want to get started with this model's base this time. Usually I skip showing the basing of the models. And most of my previous attempts have been gravel or rocks, but for the Hunter it made more sense to have a muddy base. So I mixed some PVA glue and baking soda to make a paste that I smeared over the model's base as unevenly as I could. Well let's roll cameras and get started on the first turn. And an action I don't seem to use very often is taking advantage of the local actions. Each of the locations on the map board has a specific action that you can choose to partake in. The place I start, the Red Forest, can place a mutant and an anomaly and you can choose which one to encounter. Obviously, that's the mutant, and I get the borrower. Encountering this requires an awareness of four. I have three, so my dice have to roll plus one. I can choose a starting item to bump that up to a success, or use a fatigue to gain a single die reroll. For the fight, I actually require a physique of three. I have two, so again, the dice need to total plus one, but I get a minus one. Now, my character special ability brings that to neutral, and by taking use of the double barreled shotgun, that brings me to an overall plus one and a pass. And here I place the mutant token on my character board as a trophy with 600 rubles, but also incorrect, as we will discover later. Starting also to get some paint down, I consider the colour palette for this model. The Stragatsky mythos is often characterised by bright environments and very drab people. And especially as this is a hunter, he probably would wear fairly dark clothes, even if he's not wearing specific camouflage patterns, so that he doesn't stand out and the uh, mutants see him coming. And so I start off with uh, brown trousers, muted green wellingtons, and the jacket looks like a classic black leather jacket to me. But I'm quickly drawn to the mutant's head being carried by a rope around the model. Very much the trophy. To add some colour here, without making it seem suddenly gaudy, this mutant head will start out as a ready brown, simply by mixing some red into the existing brown on my wet palette. Before I make the second action of my first turn, I realise that the underground archive is nearby and requires a mutant trophy and an artefact to unlock. Now I've already got the mutant trophy, there's two anomalies in the way where I can pick up the artefacts. One from the Red Forest location action and the other outside the archive from the game setup. I choose to encounter the one I'm standing on and balk the roll with not enough items to make it a success, and so I take some fatigue instead. After that turn, I again encounter this anomaly. It's too valuable not to. Now, the Flem anomaly limits you to only be able to reroll dice rolls with the Zona symbol, and I rolled a double Zona, which would be a critical fail, and so I really need that reroll, and thankfully, it turns it into a success. I earn the artifact and I have enough to open the archive in turn two. Even with the art artifact and the interesting endgame turns happening, I find myself drawn to the monster head hanging from the model. Before I finish the base coats in other parts, I'm getting stuck into painting the fur. I still have a tiny bit of the red-brown mix and I'm adding in tan, lightening the mix and then picking out each of the moulded strands of fur. I repeat this step, adding a little more tan each time, and painting smaller and smaller areas on the fur to give some gradient of colour from the dark red to this bright tan. 
I highly recommend painting in this way. Allow yourself to be distracted by your favorite parts of the model, even if it's not the most visible. By painting in these areas with detail, taking your time and maybe trying different techniques, you will end up with a model that naturally draws the viewer to those areas. It's often said that the face is the most important part of the model, and I disagree. The most important part of the model is the part that you think is the most important. Now, if that's the face, then that's good. Spend your time to paint the face as best you can. But if it's a weapon or a piece of equipment or a giant monster's head hanging from a rope, then that is where your time and effort should go. I get a specific event for the location of Chernobyl. I see a girl on a swing and I share her memories, which sounds pretty bad, but at least it won't take too long. She's only young. I've had this card before and came a cropper, but this time I pass and take no damage at all, thankfully. And inside the archive, I see a glowing red dot that betrays the habit of an enemy scavenger. I roll a physique test, which has the symbol for a mutant fight, so I'm allowed to use the shotgun, and very messily separate him at the neck. I read about the connection between the archive and other locations in the zone, which in game terms means I can pick up both of the secrets. But then there are more scavengers, brought out by the sound of the gunshot, I should probably be more quiet next time. After an intense action chase sequence, I escape with minimal damage to my armoured jacket and decide it's probably a good time to head for camp. It's probably also a good time to put some shadows on my model. The quick and messy technique is to use a dark wash, which looks fine and all, but I want to paint more deliberately. What that means for my shadows is painting each one in separately, which obviously takes an awful lot longer than a wash. I'm also being deliberate about how I'm placing these shadows, which is a technique I have shown before on Zona models, but I'll quickly mention again. Rather than highlighting and shadowing based on how far out the particular part is from the rest of the model, instead I'm shading underneath the fold, from the lowest point to just before the highest point. I actually liked this dark, dingy, desaturated look so much that I made the decision to not highlight the model at all, except for the monster's head, which again should draw the eye to that. Looking at the emissions track, I probably have just enough actions for one spare, and I could use that at one of the location-specific actions. As I keep forgetting these, I thought I should be deliberate about showing them this time. I have essentially three choices. The first gives me 400 rubles at a fatigue cost. Then at the Red Forest I can encounter another mutant, or I can have a fight that would give me an item. The 400 rubles is probably less than I'd get for a trophy or an item, and fighting the mutant directly would be an easier roll for me than the arbitrary fight at the Proving Grounds. So, back to the Red Forest. In the comments of a previous episode, someone pointed out some rules that I've been bending, alternately interpreting, quietly ignoring, or blatantly breaking. We resolved that as reading the rules wrong, there's a lot in there after all, but I found something that I've been doing wrong since my first game, which is double paying for mutants. The price reward on a mutant card is only when it's sold, and not when you kill the beast. And so this time I discard the money that I falsely collected earlier and I'm only collecting the money when I sell the mutant trophy. Comments like this correcting my mistakes are quite welcome in the comment section below or if you're just enjoying the journey you can say that too. Deep inside the red forest I find a gigantic old willow with an organic glowing mass writhing inside. Appeasing the entity and Zona itself, I place an artifact in front of it, which is quickly absorbed. A flash of brilliant blue light, that Cherenkov rads again, and I heal two damage. Somehow, it makes sense, I'm sure. With the bunker nearly in sight, I realize for once the tables have turned and I'm the one being hunted. 
A rumor card moves a mutant from across the board to me, and I must encounter it. Fighting this octopus mutant, I require an even roll to pass the awareness test, which I pass. And then for the physique, I could get a minus one, but I end up with a minus two on the dice. So I use some fatigue to re-roll this into a pass. As I'm about to rest, that is a value deal. But with that, and the flames of untold energies licking at the sky up north, I head to that bunker. One of the last parts of the model to paint is the face. And I had to move my lighting rig because of this cap. I mixed in some of the colours that exist on the rest of the model to tie it all together. The dark brown of the trousers became the beard, the lighter tan of the monster's head became the base coat of the face, and I took the easy route of using a Caucasian paint rather than mixing the red and tan and white together, which probably would have been more interesting. After camping, resting and healing, selling and buying, I head off to the Emissions Observatory, which only requires me to discard a secret. Hmm, <laughs> only. I did pick up two secrets, and you need to, but they have to be from different locations, so overall, I have a spare. And this went with so little event that I went straight from the observatory up to the north of the zone without even popping past the camp a second time. And that's because I realised my new pickup has some real synergy with my first one, and this was also mentioned in the comments section of a previous video. Getting to the sarcophagus is, as you would expect, quite difficult, as that's the point of the game. Both moving from the outer areas to the power plant and from the power plant to the sarcophagus itself require separate local actions and can cause serious harm. However, there are two secret cards that can help. One is the Pioneer's PDA, so that you can hop from Pripyat to the power plant, and then the power plant blueprints to hop from there to the sarcophagus. I think this pair of cards essentially also saves you an entire turn, as using them doesn't count as an action, or at least I don't think it does. And I'm lucky I got this pair on video to show them working together. But also it means that I am already at the sarcophagus. And at this point the model is also basically done, except for the base. And here you can see my camera operator didn't quite get the good angle on this, so I'll try to explain. I watered down the last of the dark brown on my wet palette and soaked it into the texture I put on the base at the beginning. I wasn't too precious about keeping the colours separate, so I ended up with some of the red brown, some of the green mixed in, which adds to the variety of tones that would be joined together in the next step, which is a simple dry brush using the last of the tan. Going over all of the colours in the base, now tied together, and looking as consistently inconsistent as mud. But as I mentioned, I'm at the sarcophagus, in lightning speed before the second emission has even occurred. Like the star of my own action film, I slide down a water pipe, scrabbling to get hold of any railing. I succeed, but then turn the card over to read the wind conditions. Without an inch to spare, you manage to avoid the end credits creeping up from darkness. The studio logo knocks out the weapon from your hand and the author's names painfully lacerate your body. You crawl to the corner of the room where you are cuddled by the personal info of the graphic design team. You freeze, waiting for the post credits scene. We lost your frame for a bit, but you win. And that is so gloriously meta, particularly for me as I'm filming playing the game, and is just wonderfully absurd. And as you can see, I've also finished the model, and that's ready to go back in the box with the others so far. Now I'm halfway through the set, but if you've noticed, I tried a different camera angle for recording the game this time, so please mention in the comments if that's a good change or a bad one. And of course, there's the description box as well, with all sorts of other stuff that I get up to, including a donation link to keep me going, and with all that said and done, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.